Hi gorgeous! Welcome back to another historically accurate makeup tutorial. If you're new to the channel, first I'd like to say welcome to you. If this is the first video you've seen of its kind, I have a whole playlist that I will have linked for you below of past decades that we have visited in this series. And if you love makeup and you love history, please subscribe to be notified of new videos in this series in the future. Today we're visiting ancient Rome, which is quite an interesting era of all the eras we have visited so far. One of the things I found so fascinating about ancient Rome is that unlike other decades where fashion had such an influence on your social status in society, that was not the case for ancient Rome. Clothing was very simplistic across all social classes, and that did not tell people at all how much or how little money you had. But what did tell your social class was your hairstyle and your makeup. The more elaborate that it was, the better. And the more elaborate that it was, the wealthier you were. Women of all social classes wore makeup, but depending on where you fell on the scale, that would define your own personal look. So as an example, if you were a wealthy woman by societal standards, you used high quality makeup and you had a team of highly skilled servants that would apply it for you never applied it yourself. If you were a working class woman, you were using cheaper quality cosmetics. They were available, but you didn't have anybody there to help you apply them. And because of the cheaper quality cosmetics that the working class was using, they didn't last as long as the higher quality cosmetics. So they'd have to keep reapplying them throughout the day because weather conditions would break them down and again, the materials were not that great. Roman women used a variety of cosmetic products, including creams, foundations, blush, eyeshadow, eyeliner, and nail polish. But the ingredients that were used to create these products smelled so horribly that they would have to douse themselves in perfume just to mask the smell from the makeup ingredients. And I have so many more interesting facts to share with you in today's video that will come as little pop-ups in the corner of your screen. Let me show you how to recreate a historically accurate ancient Roman face. To start things off here, I'm applying a moisturizer. This is the one from Ola Henriksen. Romans were very big on hygiene and visiting the Roman baths. These were also social gatherings, not only places to cleanse the body. And afterwards, they would apply a lot of moisturizing creams. And for the eyeshadow in this look, I'm going with the shade Sage from Stila's In the Garden palette. Now, unfortunately, this palette is no longer available. It has been discontinued, but any light green would look beautiful in its place here. They did have colored eyeshadow, but only in the shades blue and green. After applying a light dusting of that on the eyes, I'm going over the edges to blend them away. And for this next step, I'm taking a black eyeliner and using it to rim the lower waterline as well as the upper waterline. They did use coal in their eye makeup, and this usually consisted of ashes or soot, and sometimes charred rose petals were also used to darken the eyes. This is up to your own unique interpretation also. When I think of darkening the eyes, I think of darkening them so that they stand out, but they don't look like panda eyes. Because I don't have any lashes of my own, I am adding in a pair from InkyMinky.com. These are in the style White Lie. They are very natural looking, and that is what I wanted for this look. Because large eyes with long eyelashes was the ideal look for Roman women. For the foundation, I'm using NYX's Stay Matte But Not Flat, and I believe this is in the shade Porcelain. The reason I chose this one in particular is because it's one of those that makes me look extraordinarily pale. But it works for this look because they would whiten their faces with a variety of different ingredients to get that pale complexion that was very desired at this time. And if you remember past decades that we've visited, then you remember that white skin signified wealth and that you didn't have to be out in the fields working, and that's why it was such a desirable trait. And for my concealer, I'm going with Urban Decay's Naked Skin in the shade Fair Neutral, I believe it is. And this is another one of those that is just a little too white on me when I apply it regularly, but works well for this look. And then I'm setting the face with a mattifying powder from Wet n Wild. And because this is white and it does contain silica, it's going to contribute to that white cast that I want on the face for this look. 
For my blush, I'm going with one from NYX. This is in the shade Angel. Rouge was made from a variety of different ingredients, including rose and poppy petals, red chalk, and crocodile dung, which seems to be a very popular ingredient for the ancient Romans. They would often use light pink on the cheeks because this signified good health. Finally, I'm taking an eyeshadow. This is Max Typographic, which I would describe as a grayish black. And I'm using this to fill in my eyebrows because Roman women had very thick black eyebrows. And I am absolutely exaggerating the shape here because mine are naturally thin. So drawing them on much thicker than normal. One of the most unique qualities in this era from any other that I've done so far is that they would have their eyebrows practically meet in the middle. And some texts that I was reading said that they did meet in the middle to form the unibrow, and other texts I read said that they almost met in the middle. So it's really up to your own unique interpretation as to how you would want to recreate the eyebrows if you did a look like this. I'm choosing to keep them slightly separated here, but drawing them on much thicker than normal. And I'm sure it varied from person to person in ancient Rome as to whether or not the eyebrows met in the middle or there was some separation, simply because tweezing didn't take place until the first century BC. And from what I've been reading about ancient Rome, they were not so concerned about hair removal in this era. There is archeological evidence that they colored their nails with an insect. And this insect was imported from India and it created a red dye. So if you're gonna go for an ancient Roman look, red nails would be the ideal color to pair up with it. Now for the hair, this is not historically accurate by any means whatsoever. This is just my imagination running wild with thinking of how they might have done their hair. I'm using a small, really, really small barreled curling wand here to create very tight ringlets all around my head. And once I have those completed, I'm taking these clear ponytail bands and separating my hair into three sections. So creating two ponytails at the top of the head and then creating one ponytail at the back of the head. And this kind of shape creates that waterfall effect with the hair. And then I went back with random bobby pins and pinned pieces of hair to my scalp to create the shape. Then I added in a gold leaf headband. I found this on Etsy and I will have it linked below for you. And this is what the back of the hair looks like. So you can get an idea of the shape that I created and what it looked like from the back. And for the next video in this series, I'm working on an 80s glam rock, which should be really fun to create. Let me know where you'd like to travel to next. It can be any of the past decades we have visited or one that we have not visited yet. Thank you so much for watching. And again, if you would like to see more videos in this series, I will have the whole playlist linked for you below. Please subscribe to be notified of new videos in this series in the future. And I look forward to seeing you again in the next one.